The next item of business is an urgent question. Miles Briggs. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that, that underreporting of any waiting times has taken place across NHS Lothian, and how will it ensure that people responsible are held to account? Shona Robson. The findings from NHS Lothian's final internal audit report, which I received over the weekend, are very concerning. As the member will know, I have instructed an independent investigation to be carried out by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, led by Professor Derek Bell. I think it's important to await the outcome of this independent review and its recommendations. In the meantime, I welcome the interim actions taken to ensure practices in NHS Lothian are brought into line with ISD's guidelines to ensure accuracy going forward. My officials will continue to work closely with the board to ensure that recommendations are fully implemented as soon as possible. I thank, Miles the, Briggs. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but when was the Cabinet Secretary first made aware that NHS Lothian a &E waiting times had been unreported across other a &E facilities within the Health Board area, not just at St John's? And given that it's only a few years since NHS Lothian was involved in another waiting time scandal, when it was found to be marking patients as unavailable to artificially reduce the number of breaches of waiting times guarantees. And can the Cabinet Secretary say if, whether she has the confidence that NHS Lothian has the leadership to make sure that these sorts of things never happen again? Shona Robson. So um, let me just um, give Miles Briggs and the Chamber a little bit of, of background. Uh, on Wednesday, the 11th of October, uh, a member of staff from St John's Hospital uh, wrote to the Chief Executive of NHS Lothian and to me outlining allegations of uh, bullying, intimidation and altering of waiting times in St John's A&E department. Um, I was very concerned about that and asked that an investigation was immediately uh, put underway by NHS Lothian to find out whether there was um, the veracity of, of these concerns and to, to look into the matter in detail. Um, what then became apparent from the internal uh, investigation was that uh, the concerns were not just restricted to St John's but uh, were an issue uh, across the acute sites within NHS Lothian and essentially what was happening was not, ad uh, not adhering to national guidance. The national guidance is very clear about how the four-hour target, for example, should be recorded. Uh, these were not being followed within NHS Lothian and rather there were local operating procedures that were being followed instead. Uh, that has now changed, obviously, as I said in my initial answer. Uh, we are um, expecting uh, and making sure that NHS Lothian are now following the national guidance. I also, though, felt it was important to go beyond the internal uh, look and make sure there was an external look at these issues in more detail, which will look at some of the issues Miles Briggs is hinting towards around what, um, where were these instructions emanating from and uh, what uh, was the, the, the governance around that. Those are all issues that the external review uh, will look into and I would expect uh, to have that report early in the new year and of course we'll publish the findings of that in due course uh, thereafter. Uh, so I think we should await that report um, and then uh, we will be able to see what further action uh, is required at that stage. Miles Briggs. Thank you Deputy President Officer. In this case it's quite clear that local guidelines have been put in place which are against what should have been taking place and I think what is important is this is NHS Lothian's problem exposed but maybe is not just here in Lothian and the Edinburgh's and so can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what assessment has the Scottish Government made of how waiting times are being recorded in every health board across Scotland and in order to reassure patients across our country can she guarantee today that no other, no other health board is also locally producing such guidelines to under report any waiting times? Shona Robson. We of course have contacted chief executives of other health boards to uh, make sure that they can assure themselves and assure us that the national guidelines are being applied 
in their boards and we have no evidence that national guidance is not being followed in those other boards. Uh, and I think it is important to recognise that in amongst the, the issues being raised in Lothian is actually a very, very strong performance by, by our a and &E departments uh, across Scotland. Uh, and certainly the work that has been carried out by the unscheduled care team has led to a very sustained improvement of our a and &E departments. And I think as they face winter pressures, we should uh, make sure that we uh, send out a very clear message of support for all our our hard-working staff in our aid in &E departments across Scotland who will face winter pressures that are beginning obviously to emerge in our health system as they are elsewhere. So um, I can reassure Miles Briggs that uh, we will make we will um, not just uh, look at the uh, internal review but the external review as I've said will answer some of the wider questions about uh, NHS Lothian in this regard and as I say very happy to make sure that is published once I've received it. A few members have pressed their buttons to ask a question. I'll try and get through them all. I call Anna Sarwar to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. These findings will be of huge concern to patients and staff. While performance continues to decline impacting on patients and staff, the one positive has been the ability to rely on detailed and perceived accurate statistical analysis. The fear will now be that this is not an isolated case but a deliberate attempt to game the statistics, meaning even poorer performance than previously feared. Given this, will the Cabinet Secretary today give an undertaking that she will instigate an urgent nationwide independent review of reporting procedures and undertake to come back to this Parliament with the outcomes of that review, also outlining what additional resources will also be provided so we actually meet our expected patient treatment standards? Our overworked, undervalued and under-resourced NHS staff and Scotland's patients deserve nothing less. Shona Robson. Well, I, I think what our staff and patients deserve is that due recognition of the huge efforts that our A&E departments have put in uh, over uh, the, the weeks, months and years to dramatically improve the performance uh, within our A&E departments in Scotland. And I think it would be quite wrong uh, to... Uh, assert that what has happened in Lothian uh, is an issue anywhere else in the rest of Scotland. There is no evidence that any other a &E departments are not following the national guidance and chief executives uh, have been clear about that and have been clear with us. In terms of making sure that uh, the interests of patients are of course at the heart of this and the external review being led by uh, Professor Derek Bell uh, will of course uh, be looking at whether um, any uh, patients uh, have been impacted by the issues that have been uh, um, brought to light within Lothian. That will be part of the uh, work that Derek Bell and his team are undergoing. We've also made Audit Scotland aware of the issue and will now discuss the findings of the full internal report with them and in the light of the ongoing external review uh, by the Academy. Derek Bell, I should add, has also been very involved in the work of the unscheduled care team in making the improvements across our A&E uh, departments uh, in Scotland. So, you know, this time more than any, as we are approaching winter, I would hope that members will get behind our A&E departments because they are are facing winter pressures as they will be across the whole of these islands and I want to put on record my thanks to the hard work and efforts that each and every one of them puts in to keep us safe during winter. Ben McPherson followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome that Professor Derek Bell, who I note is also President of the Royal College of Physicians, will be carrying out the review of the allegations. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what the remit of the review will be and can she confirm that it will report as quickly as possible? Shona Robson, and could I ask members to be aware that we're still uh, in session and keep your conversations down? So, I mean, the remit of the external team is really to make sure that they leave no stone unturned in uh, looking into what has happened within NHS Lothian and, importantly, where the governance was uh, around this and also to look at whether there was any impact uh, on patients uh, during this time. It's also important to uh, say that, um, of course, we have made sure 
that going forward uh, NHS Lothian and all of their acute sites are now adhering uh, to the national uh, guidance. Um, as I said, I am expecting that independent review to report early in the new year. The findings will be published in due course thereafter. And if there are any wider lessons to be learned for the rest of the system from that report, then of course those will be applied. Alex Cole-Hamilton, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Reports in the press would suggest that uh, revelations about NHS Lothian and its reporting of A&E waiting times came from a whistleblower. Given that confidence in the mechanisms around whistleblowing in the NHS are not high, will the Cabinet Secretary instruct this independent review to expand its focus to other health boards, perhaps issuing a confidential staff survey to other A&E departments, so that we can ascertain whether this problem is more widespread? Shona Robson. I confirm to Alex Cole Hamilton that indeed um, the, uh, the, whist the whistleblower um, was um, uh, in contact with me directly as uh, the whistleblower was in contact with um, the chief executive and the whistleblower has been kept informed of the process uh, going forward. Uh, and I think it does show that where people do um, raise concerns that they are listened to and importantly acted upon. And I think that sends out a very important message to the staff within the NHS that should they raise concerns, whether it's through the whistleblowing helpline or indeed directly with me as the cabinet secretary, then those uh, issues and concerns are acted upon promptly and swiftly and with determination to get to the bottom of what has gone on. Um, in it should also be noted that, of course, we are strengthening uh, the whistleblowing processes. And just this week, uh, we have announced the work around the uh, independent role um, or, uh, with the officer, the national officer, where uh, whistleblowing concerns can uh, be raised. So it is important that we make sure that the message goes out to staff that if they have any concerns in whatever setting within our health service, then they should be reporting those and importantly they will be acted upon. If we speed up a wee bit, I'll manage to get the last three questions in. Colin Smith, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary say whether this under-reporting of accident emergency waiting times by NHS Lothian would have been picked up by the Scottish Government had it not been for a whistleblower? And if not, will the Scottish Government be reviewing its own procedures for gathering monitoring and scrutinising waiting time data to ensure the government doesn't have to rely on a whistleblower to make sure its own figures are correct. Shona Robson. Well, as I said in my earlier answer, if there are any lessons to be learned um, around how we make sure we monitor uh, any changes and fluctuations that need further investigation, then I think Colin Smith makes an important point, and that will be picked up uh, by uh, Derek Bell in the external uh, review. Um, in terms of what the impact has been um, within NHS Lothian, I think we need to wait for the external review to give us uh, an indication of, of what impact that has in terms of their reporting figures so we can see that the scale of that and I think just to, to give further reassurance that uh, that will not have had a huge impact on the overall national performance of our a &E departments which continue to perform very very well um, and uh, as we go into winter I think it's very important that we uh, give our support to our a &E staff and understand the winter pressures that they will be under over the next few weeks. Uh, we've come to the last question, I'm afraid, Alison Johnson. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide assurance that the review will investigate any suggestions of bullying and harassment and whether staff have adequate time for CPD and ensuring that they're familiar with best practice? And while we wait the arrival of the National Whistleblowing Officer, what additional support will be put in place for whistleblowers? Shona Robson. Well, we... As part of the uh, internal and external review, um, it's important that staff are interviewed in a, uh, a way that they feel confident in being able to raise any issues. And of course, that is a process that is ongoing to make sure that uh, all of the issues that have gone on in terms of what staff uh, have, uh, have felt and any concerns about, that staff may have will ha absolutely fully have the opportunity to raise those in a confidential environment and that is uh, important. Um, we are, the, my officials are supporting uh, that process and making sure that the work that Derek Bell and his team
team uh, is getting on with has the full support in order to take that forward as quickly as possible. And as I said to other members, to, to reassure any uh, recommendations emerging from that external report, of course, will be implemented not just in NHS Lothian, but if appropriately elsewhere too. That concludes the urgent question, and we now move on to decision time. There is one question to be put as, as a result of today's business, and the question is that motion 9241, in the name of Johan Lamont, on petition PE1517, on polypropylene mesh medical devices, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. And that concludes decision time. <coughs> we'll now move on to members' business, and I'll give members a few minutes to vacate the chamber. <laughs>